The Space Division of Rockwell International, headquartered in Downey, California, is supported by facilities in Seal Beach, Palmdale, Edwards Air Force Base, Cocoa Beach in Florida, Mississippi, Houston, and Huntsville, Alabama. The Space Division's prestigious legacy of technical management excellence includes Saturn S2 launch vehicles and the command and service modules for the Apollo, Skylab, and Apollo Soyuz missions. The Division's business is at the farthest reaches of high technology, expanding the state of the art in space transportation systems and technology applications. The Apollo Soyuz mission in July 1975 climaxed a most remarkable technical accomplishment. The creation of a spacecraft that would take Americans to the moon and back, transport them to an Earth orbiting space station, Skylab, and finally to a meeting in space with the Soviets. The Apollo spacecraft and docking module for the Apollo Soyuz test project were built by the Space Division in Downey under contract to the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. The mission's major objective was accomplished when the international docking mechanism functioned flawlessly, thereby linking Apollo and Soyuz together in Earth orbit for two days. Completion of the Apollo-Soyuz mission marked the end of an era. In the future, Americans will be thrust into space aboard the world's first reusable manned spacecraft, the Space Shuttle. The Space Shuttle flight system includes the orbiter, an external tank to contain the ascent propellant used by the orbiter's main engines, and two solid rocket boosters. The Space Division is NASA's shuttle system integration contractor and the prime contractor for the orbiter. The orbiter is a reusable cargo-carrying combination spacecraft and aircraft that will greatly enhance the operational capability of our space program. The space shuttle system will be operational in 1979. Shuttles will be launched from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida and from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. The two solid rocket boosters and the orbiter main engines will fire in parallel at liftoff. The thrust will be greater than six million pounds. The shuttle's gross liftoff weight will be over four million pounds. The two solid rocket boosters will be jettisoned after burnout, recovered at sea, returned to land, refurbished, and then reused. The large external tank will be separated before the orbiter goes into Earth orbit. The spacecraft's orbital maneuvering engines will provide the final thrust to propel the orbiter into Earth orbit. In orbit, the spacecraft's payload bay doors will be opened and the crew will begin payload operations. The orbiter's payload bay is 60 feet long and has a diameter of 15 feet. Because of its versatility and its large cargo carrying capability, the shuttle will be able to combine several missions. For example, on one trip into Earth orbit, the spacecraft might place a weather satellite and an Earth resources satellite into different orbits, retrieve a communication satellite, and return it to Earth for servicing. The Space Shuttle will carry Space Lab into Earth orbit. Space Lab is an international program being developed by the European Space Agency, an organization made up of 10 nations of the European space community. After completing orbital operations, the crew will initiate deorbit maneuvers. Re-entry will be made into the Earth's atmosphere at a high angle of attack. Aerodynamic heating at the orbiter's nose and leading edge of the wing will rise to nearly 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit. However, the vehicle's thermal protection covering will prevent the orbiter's aluminum structure from experiencing heat greater than 350 degrees. At low altitude, the orbiter will go into horizontal flight for an airplane-type approach and landing. The minimum velocity at landing will be 169 knots. After each flight, the orbiter will be taken to a processing facility where it will be serviced and equipped for another mission. This is a full-scale mock-up of the orbiter at the Space Division's facility in Downey. A typical payload is being erected out of the payload bay. These studies are being performed to get a feel for movement in and out of the orbiter and for techniques for the replacement of payload components. 
While these studies are going on, production of the first space shuttle orbiter is well underway at the Orbiter Final Assembly Facility in Palmdale and at the Space Division's Downey Facility. The orbiter's primary structures include the crew module, designed to accommodate four crew members and three additional scientific and technical passengers, the forward fuselage that houses the crew module, the nose landing gear, and a variety of systems components, the aft fuselage that supports the orbiter's three main engines, the mid fuselage built by General Dynamics in San Diego, the vertical tail made by Fairchild Republic in New York, and the wing built by the Grumman Corporation in New York. Each orbiter will be equipped with 185 miles of wiring, more than 46,000 wire segments, and more than 3,000 electrical connectors. The 185 miles of wiring ties together the most sophisticated and versatile aviation electronics, avionics, ever designed for an aircraft or spacecraft. This highly advanced equipment, manufactured by the most technically qualified companies in the nation, is evaluated in the Space Division's Shuttle Avionics Development Laboratory in Downey. The Shuttle Flight Simulation Complex is adjacent to the Avionics Development Laboratory. Here, Rockwell and NASA pilots are able to simulate orbiter approach and landing maneuvers at the Kennedy Space Center. This is NASA's carrier aircraft a Boeing 747, modified to piggyback the orbiter cross-country between operational launch and landing sites and to carry the orbiter aloft for the approach and landing test program. For its first free flight in 1977, the orbiter will be launched from the carrier aircraft at 20,000 feet. This will begin the approach and landing test program, a program primarily structured to demonstrate the airworthiness of the orbiter subsystems required for approach and landing. As the shuttle program progresses in California, 3,000 miles east, work has begun to prepare the Kennedy Space Center for shuttle operations. The orbiter will land on this runway when shuttle flights begin at the end of this decade. Among the payloads the shuttle may launch are the Navstar Global Positioning System satellites. The Space Division has a Phase I contract to develop and manufacture five Navstar satellites for the Department of Defense. The first Navstar satellites will be launched aboard Atlas F rockets from Vandenberg Air Force Base, California in 1977. In the mid-1980s, the system will have 24 satellites operating, eight in each of three orbital planes, each at an altitude of about 11,000 miles. The global positioning system will greatly advance the science of navigation. This unique system will provide ships, aircraft, and land vehicles equipped with receiving units with the capability to determine their positions to an accuracy of less than 30 feet and their velocity to one-tenth of a knot. The Space Division has begun work on Navstar at its Seal Beach facility. This 3,200 square foot clean room is where the satellites will be assembled and checked out. Already, a full-scale engineering manufacturing aid has been assembled. It is being used to position the satellite's components and determine the exact configuration and routing of wire harnesses and tubing. The testing of Navstar systems is well underway. Successful operation of the Solar Array Deployment System has been demonstrated through a series of verification tests. The Navstar Development Test Vehicle has undergone acoustic vibration testing, thermal testing, and antenna pattern testing. From our legacy of the Apollo, Skylab, and Apollo Soyuz programs, the Space Division inherited an important principle to apply to future space programs. The necessity for attention to detail and correctness of every action by each member of our team to maintain the highest possible standard of performance so that all hardware works and works properly. Excellence is our goal, our commitment.